Hi, my name is Ethan, and I'm the creator of PSPC. This is a video tutorial explaining in detail how to install and use the program. This tutorial is quite long and split into a number of parts. The best way to watch this is straight through rather than picking specific sections since each of my explanations of various features tend to build on previous knowledge. However, if you're already familiar with PSPC, you might want to skip around and watch only what you're most interested in or confused about. PSPC is a program for writing music on the Sony PSP handheld. PSP-Seq uses a wide variety of audio synthesis methods and sample playback along with various audio effects options. The sequencer allows you to trigger these instruments in loops and then sequence these loops into full songs. Your songs can be played back directly on the PSP or uh, exported as WAV files so they can be used in PC applications like Ableton Live or Renoise. PSP-Seq is not a program for playing back various media types like MP3 or AAC. If you're looking for a program for this purpose, I'd recommend either using the audio playback application built into the PSP or a homebrew program like PS Player. For the latest updates on PSP Seek, there are two main websites. My personal website at dspmusic.org slash PSP and the PSP Seek Google group at groups.google.com slash group slash PSP Seek. Also, feel free to email me at PSPSeq at dspmusic.org if you have any questions or thoughts on the program. <laughs> The latest version of PSPC is 3.01, and that is the version which these tutorials are designed to cover. It can be downloaded from dspmusic.org slash PSP or from any of the major websites that host PSP Homebrew. Let's talk a little bit about installing PSPSeq on the PSP. Since PSPSeq is homebrew software, meaning it's not officially sanctioned by Sony, it can be a little confusing on how to actually make it run on your PSP. The firmware that Sony provides for the PSP does not allow you to run homebrew. What you need to do is install what is known as custom firmware. This is modified firmware which allows you to run both official Sony software as well as homebrew created by non-licensed developers. In order to install the custom firmware, you need to have two things. A specially programmed PSP battery, known as a Pandora's battery, and a memory stick programmed with the custom firmware files. This is known as a magic memory stick. Unfortunately, in order to make a Pandora's battery, you need another PSP which is already has custom firmware on it. To get past this chicken and egg scenario, you can buy a Pandora's battery online or a commercial battery made by Daytel, which serves the same purpose. Daytel calls these a service mode battery. There are a number of tutorials online that explain how to create a magic memory stick. If you search Google for magic memory stick tutorials, you'll find what you're looking for. When doing this search, try to find more recent tutorials since there are constant advances in custom firmware installation, which make installation of this firmware easier and easier. There is also a popular Windows application called PSP Pandora Deluxe, which helps automate the process of making a magic memory stick. Once you have these two items, caref items carefully follow the instructions that come with the magic memory stick tutorial. While the actual installation process usually isn't too difficult, you are modifying the most fundamental software on the PSP, so there is some risk involved. However, it is minimal, and once you're done, you'll have a PSP which can do much more than what it could have done 10 minutes ago. If all this sounds intimidating or confusing to you, the other easier option is to have someone program custom firmware for you. A very good resource for finding people to do this is Craigslist. Typically, you'll pay around $20 to have someone reprogram your PSP with custom firmware. I would also recommend that if you have someone reprogram your PSP, that you have them make a Pandora's battery and a magic memory stick as well. That way you can update other PSPs with custom firmware. Once your PSP has custom firmware installed, installing PSPSeq involves copying files to the memory stick. The name of the zip file for PSPSeq is PSPSeq301.zip. Inside this zip file is a directory called 3.xx, and inside this directory is another directory called PSPSeq301. Copy the PSPSeq301 directory to the PSP slash game directory on the memory stick. You'll also want to extract the three PDFs and the readme.txt file, which are stored at the same level as a 3.xx directory. These files include a very short document to explain the basics of PSPSeq, a full user's manual, and a single sheet quick reference with all the button combinations and some useful tables of data. PSPSeq is also compatible with a 1.50 firmware add-on. If for some reason you're having trouble running PSPSeq in the PSP slash game directory and have the 1.50 add-on, try copying the files from the 1.50 subdirectory of the zip file to the PSP slash game150 directory on the PSP's memory stick. Lastly, you will need to install FATMSMod. This changes some of the flash memory drivers in the PSP's firmware, 
such that they run much more efficiently. If you don't install this, PSP Seek will run, but saving and loading files from the memory stick will be incredibly slow. Once you have a PSP with custom firmware on it, installing FAT MS Mod is quite easy. There are a number of descriptions on how to run this program online. Also, if you have someone program the custom firmware for you, you can ask them to install FAT MS Mod at, that, at the same time. To launch PSP Seek, go to the Game option on the cross media bar and press down on the D-pad to select the memory stick. Press X to bring up a list of all homebrew software installed in your PSP. Press down on the D-pad to scroll through all homebrew files. One of the icons should be for PSP Seek 3.01. Highlight and press X to launch PSP Seek. If you do not see PSP Seek, the most likely reason uh, for this is that you didn't copy the files to the right location on the memory stick. If you browse in the memory stick from the base directory, you should see PSP, then Game, then PSP Seek 301. Then some directories for PSP Seek, as well as a file called eboot.pbp. If this file is not there, then PSP Seek will not work. Try following the installation and launch instructions again and see if it works for you. Before I begin talking about how to use PSP Seek, I should point out that for this tutorial, I am not running PSP Seek on my PSP. This is a version which runs natively on my PC. This version of PSP Seek is not available for general download, though I might provide it at some point in the future. I'm using it for this tutorial because it's a lot easier to record video on my PC. Whenever I refer to controls for PSP Seek, I'll do it from the perspective of running it on the PSP. There are some cases where this isn't a perfect mapping of controls between the PC and the PSP versions, but this would be good enough for demonstrating nearly every piece of functionality in the PSP version of this program.